Okay, so there's bad cap situations, and then there's the New Orleans Saints situation. So currently, if you look at over the cap, which is what I'm going to use, uh, I made a similar video for Tampa Bay. I want to make a video and sort of talk about how can New Orleans get out of this, and there are ways. So we'll start off with this right here. What you see on the screen is that the New Orleans Saints are currently projected to be $69 million over the cap in 2021 meaning they have to clear up 69 million and then some because not only do they have to clear up some money to you know sign their uh you know some depth players but also their draft picks so they're in kind of a, a tough situation to say the least and what you see underneath is those are all the players who currently their contracts have expired and the numbers you see to the right are my estimations for what kind of contracts they'll end up getting so for example jared cook one year, six million, and so on and so forth. These aren't all of their free agents, but these are a you know significant chunk of them. So, you know, the biggest ones, I would say, the biggest names. So what do you do? How do you clear up that much amount of cap space? Do you just have to cut your whole team? Well, no, there are things you can do. One thing is restructuring contracts, which, listen, that's kind of how you get into this mess in the first place is by restructuring contracts and getting some of the cap space paid the next year instead of this year. But still, it probably would make sense to do that, at least on a couple of contracts, just to get yourself out of this spine. So that way you don't have to like pay players to sit the whole year or something like that. OK, so here are four restructures that could save some money. So the way that this sort of thing works would be like you see Taysom Hill. Uh, it says 16 in the left column, but then in the right column, that would be the new deal. So it's 10 and then 18 million. So that's kind of how that would work. So you're saving six million dollars this year if that's what you decided to do. The obvious disadvantage, though, is you would have to pay $18 million to Taysom Hill the next year. So that's just kind of how a restructure works. And you also see how much it would save to cut all of these guys. If you cut Hill, you would save $5 million. For Taron Armstead, you would save $6 million. And you, would, you could save $6 million by a restructure. Personally, I don't think you want to lose Taron Armstead. I think you restructure that deal. And then, you know, Janor Jenkins and Emmanuel Sanders, you can save money by restructuring them or by cutting them. Two more potential restructures on the board would be Cam Jordan and Michael Thomas, despite the fact that both of them have at least three years left on their deal. But again, you could still restructure it. Like you could find a way to honestly uh, save 10 million this year by restructuring Cam Jordan's contract. The downside is this means that you're probably paying Cam Jordan $25 million in his final year. But, you know, again, uh, the way guaranteed money works and things like that, it, there's it, it's not ideal, but this is an opportunity and this is something you're going to do. You're already paying him a ton of money, so you're only going to pay him a couple more million in the future. And like for Michael Thomas, you could try to, you know, make it from 19 million this year to 13 million this year and just pay him two million extra each of the following years. So, again, goes up a little, but it's manageable and you're getting some money that you need. That's just the idea. Now, you may be wondering, well, that doesn't seem like it's that great of an idea, right? Because you're still just pushing it all down the road. So you're going to have to get rid of some people, too. You're going to have to make some cuts. Well, who are the guys that you can't really restructure? You kind of just have to either cut them or keep them. It's really these four players, four players who I like uh, to varying degrees. Quan Alexander, he's good, but he's 100% going to get cut. $13 million is how much they would save from cutting him, and there's no dead cap for cutting him. So this is an easy decision. Uh, Lattimore, again, kind of a similar thing. You would save $10 million. There is no dead cap. Uh, you know, again, it's tough to lose Lattimore. He is a good corner. Uh, you know, He's elite against Mike Evans and pretty good against everyone else, but $10 million is a lot of money for a team that is strapped for cash right now. Uh, we'll skip Ramshack for a second and go to Malcolm Brown. Malcolm Brown, you're going to have about a million in dead cap, but save $5 million. Again, I like him as a player, but you might have to make this move and cut him. Ryan Ramshack is, you would save $11 million, no dead cap, but it's just tough to get rid of a, you know elite right tackle. I can't imagine they would cut him under any circumstances. He seems like he's one of the last guys that would go. So there you go. Those are your options. Now we do the fun part, which is sort of plug in the options and try and figure out what are the best options for New Orleans to take. Really, there's only two 
that I can really think of, although there is a third that's kind of a fun one, but really only two main ones that I think that I can see New Orleans doing. And they both kind of come down to the quarterback, I would say, because let's start off with the first one. So this one right here. First things first, they're not re-signing anybody. So all of those free agents I showed at the beginning, Jared Cook, Sheldon Rankings, Marcus Williams, Trey Hendrickson, uh, they're all gone. You know, Jameis Winston gone, all of them. So no re-signing. Now all you need to do is clear up the $69 million. I say that you cut Kwan Alexander, Lattimore, and Malcolm Brown. So you're cutting three players. And then if you were to restructure everyone else's contract that I mentioned, all of those guys, you're now in a situation where your net cap would actually be in the positive, $1 million. So you'd still have to finagle a couple of things just to get your, you know, be able to sign everybody. But that's about where you'd want to be at. So $1 million, you're good there. The obvious issue, though, is you look one column below, the net cap for 2022 is $9 million, which is you're basically in a slightly better situation, but still not in a great situation because, again, you're going to have guys you're going to want to sign to long deals. Ryan Ramchek being the key guy, you can't sign him for $9 million. You're going to have to clear up more money. How do you do this? Well, there's a way you can do that. It's right here. This one honestly makes the most sense to me. Uh, you can tell me if you disagree. I think you re-sign Jameis Winston, which would be one year, $3 million. And I think you tell him, hey, you're going to start this year. It's hard for me to imagine Winston turning down that deal. He wants to be able to start. And, you know, $3 million, that's actually a pay raise from last time. So now you need $72 million, so a little bit more. But what you're doing is you're actually going to save $41 million in cuts this time as opposed to just $29 last time because you're going to cut Taysom Hill and Janoris Jenkins as well. This is adding on from Alexander, Lattimore, and Brown that we cut you know, last time also. They're still getting cut in this scenario. And then everyone else I had as a potential restructure, you still restructure. So then you look at the bottom, that looks a lot more manageable. Only negative four million this year, which again, it's not perfect, but you can you can find ways to nickel and dime and figure that out. If you're you're in the ballpark there, which is what New Orleans needs to do right here in the first few weeks of free agency, is try, figure out a plan to get in the ballpark and you can work from there. And now next year you have forty three million, so maybe you even pay Ryan Ramchek and sort of make a restructure and get some of the cap uh, this year done that way. So doing that could be a huge thing. So I think that this makes more sense because. The reality is the restructure with Taysom Hill is just tough because he's currently his cap hit is is wild right now. His cap hit is currently 16 million a year. It's hard to deal with that. And Janoris Jenkins' cap hit this year is currently 14 million. So getting away from those two contracts are going to be key. The third and final option that I didn't even make a graph for would just be it'd be very similar to the last one you saw, but instead of signing Jameis Winston, you sign Drew Brees, which you're saying, wait, what are you talking about, Jackson? But Drew Brees, to my knowledge, hasn't officially retired just yet. We're all assuming he will, uh, even over the cap had assumed he will. They're already counting his contract as a retired contract, which means you can split it up into the next two seasons. If he decided to say, you know what, I don't need that money, and instead just give me a three-year deal, then you could be in a situation where Drew Brees now, you're actually saving $10 million and you're still having a quarterback, and Drew Brees starts. Uh, I, I think the only reason he would want to do this would be just to try and set some passing records, uh, maybe because he currently is only 1,000 yards ahead of Brady, and Brady will play next year, so maybe he wants to keep the record. And so maybe he signs on for one more year to see if he can hold on to it, which it's possible. Listen, we've seen crazier things. It's certainly not completely out of the ordinary. I think the Saints would probably be better with Breeze than Winston or Hill, quite frankly, even without his uh, you know, arm strength anymore. And it would put him in a much better situation. But again, I just realistically, I don't know if that's happening. So quite frankly, uh, I think you sign Jameis Winston, let him be the starter. Who knows? You know, he can throw, uh, hopefully throw you into some games, help you win that way. And now you're in a, a re reasonable situation for next year. And there still is the hope that you can fix Jameis Winston. And uh, I don't know. It's been a while with Winston. He's currently going to be playing in his uh, seventh year in the NFL. So I don't know how long he needs, but we've seen crazier things. So who knows? Uh, that's what I think they should do. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.